This video is brought to you by Noom. Okay, look, you know me. You know what James Bond means to me, right? Well, it shouldn't be a surprise that spy movies in general get me going the same way that that series does. The spy genre has had its ups and downs. There was a period right after the wall came down when its place in the world seemed unclear. How do we make espionage relevant when there's no longer this giant Soviet power with which to dedicate our resources to? Well, we got our answer in the mid-90s when GoldenEye and the first Mission Impossible film heralded the return of the genre, and for about 20 years, years afterwards, things were looking great. But we're in a bit of a drought again. It's been six years since our last Bond film and three since our last Mission Impossible movie. And sure, the next entries are finally on the horizon, but I need more than that to satisfy my appetite. Two franchises are not enough to show the world why spy movies matter and why they can still work. Thankfully, the Marvel Cinematic Universe gave me exactly what I was looking for. And it's, by the way, of Black Widow? That doesn't sound right, what? That's right, folks, the Avengers' own super spy is the savior we never knew we needed. Now, in order to be the world's greatest spy and save the world alongside gods, super soldiers, and men in metal suits like the Avengers, you're going to want to make smart lifestyle choices. Well, thanks to this video's sponsor, Noom, now you can. Noom is a health and wellness regimen that uses a mix of psychology and science in order to guide people towards living a healthier life. With Noom, you get a better understanding of how your mind works, and in turn, you can develop better habits that stick with you. Noom is not a quick fix or a diet of the week. Instead, it's all about adjusting your overall lifestyle in a healthier way that is tailored to who you are. Rather than trying to just help you hit a number on a scale and call it a day, Noom digs deeper, from teaching you daily about why you should go for certain foods over others and how to give yourself the motivation you need, not just today or tomorrow, but every continuous day. When you sign up for Noom, you'll be paired with a personal goal specialist who is trained in psychology, fitness, and nutrition. And if you enjoy bonding with a community, you can even join a group chat with other Noom subscribers. Just click the link in the description below to check out Noom and take the quick and easy online evaluation to create a custom plan that suits you. And thank you so much to Noom for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to the world of international espionage and talking about why I love Black Widow. Let's get this out of the way. Black Widow is awesome. It's a kick-ass spy thriller featuring the MCU's to be expected gripping set pieces, Scarlett Johansson's best performance as Natasha Romanoff, and a supporting cast who not only bring their A-game, but are relishing in it. Being set right after Civil War, it has a moderate aesthetic through line to that earlier entry, but overall brings a fresh and wonderful new style to the franchise. It's one of my favorite MCU films to date, and I just wanted to get that out of the way first so that you could understand where I'm coming from. I understand many of you watching aren't going to feel as passionately as I do, or that this film is 10 years too late, and that's completely okay, but at least from my opinion, I'm here to tell you why I think Black Widow works, and why I think it's one of the most important, effective, and emotional entries in the MCU. Without getting into heavy spoilers or deep plot, the basic premise of the film is that Natasha Romanoff is on the run from S.H.I.E.L.D. following her actions in Leipzig, and while hiding out, receives a package from her sister Yelena that rewrites her onto a quest that drudges up her past, including her time in the Red Room, where she was conditioned from childhood to become a master spy assassin for the Russians before her heel face turned towards S.H.I.E.L.D. It is, of course, the long overdue Black Widow solo film that everyone has wanted for years, and while it should have come out chronologically after Civil War and made her involvement in Infinity War onwards even more emotional and impactful, that doesn't diminish how genuinely great this film is, and it certainly doesn't diminish its importance, nor the importance of Natasha Romanoff. Think about where we've gone with superhero films before the MCU. They're all about men. Superman, Batman, Wolverine, Spider-Man, The Hulk, Iron Man. There are certainly great characters who are women who appear in these films, but they all, even the ensemble ones like X-Men, have a clearly defined lead character that is a man. Storm in the X-Men films, Mary Jane in the Spider-Man films, Catman in, uh, you know what, we're not gonna touch about that movie. Meow. Yeah but they're all supporting characters, propping up our man's man hero as he saves the world. 
Natasha Romanoff really changed that. In her introductory appearance in 2010's Iron Man 2, yeah, she's got the same amount of significance as her predecessors, although you could still easily argue it's a somewhat Iron Man and Cap-heavy film, Natasha is more front and center than arguably any woman in a comic book film before her. After our fun little car chase pre-title sequence, the very first thing we cut to is Black Widow, and we spend very little time without her right up until we hit the end credits. She's essential to bringing Bruce Banner on board, she helps trick Loki, she's even something of a voice of reason during the moment where Loki's staff is kinda driving everyone insane. And of course, there's no limit to the amount of ass she kicks during the New York City climax. Her place in the Avengers and her bond with her teammates secured, Natasha becomes something of the heart of the group. She's often a measured voice of reason, even during times of deep conflict, and she becomes a confidant to both Bruce Banner and Steve Rogers in particular. Her voice is the thing that can most easily bring Bruce back from being the Hulk, and through her experiences alongside Steve in The Winter Soldier, they develop a mutual trust that is matched by few people in either of their lives. And then of course there's Clint Barton, with whom Natasha had already formed a sibling-like lifelong bond. Natasha abandons her espionage assignment during The Avengers in order to help Clint overcome Loki's mind control. Of course, between her time in the Red Room and her subsequent life as a conditioned killer for post-Soviet Russia, Natasha spent much of her life manipulated and woefully mistreated, conditioned and activated to do horrible things to people. It was a long, arduous journey for her to become the hero she is. She couldn't do it alone, and Clint played a big part in bringing out her humanity. He's family. The entire team is family. If there's a common thread throughout Natasha Romanoff's appearances in the MCU, it's that when her family is in need, she will come and she will fix the situation at all costs. In Black Widow, Natasha fights to fix her fake Russian family's problems even though she's been separated from them for over two decades. Of course, she does so while she's on the run and separated from her new Avengers adopted one, and it's in helping her old family that she learns how she can help save her new one, which she will go on to do in Infinity War and Endgame. That culminates to her self-sacrifice during Endgame, because she's the character who would do so for the others probably before anyone else. Even Steve Rogers, who once jumped on what he thought was a live grenade. Nat's loss is felt in-universe, but has been felt much more potently on the other side of the fourth wall. She's important to the MCU, she's important to us, and she continues to be important even after she's gone. And even more so, the importance of her legacy is tied together with that of spy cinema. For all the aches and pains we felt during the Bond hiatuses, for as much as we wish we could have a Mission Impossible movie every single year, the reality is, is that this character has consistently been here to fill the gaps, even if the movies she's featured in don't exactly fall under what we think of as spy cinema. The Winter Soldier is probably the closest Natasha has gotten to a globe-trotting espionage adventure like we expect of James Bond, but even that film is very much a Captain America superhero flick, with the expected showdown between Avengers and its necessary escalation of action to a realm beyond espionage and into fantasy. But now, with Black Widow, finally, Natasha Romanoff is given her Bond film. After all the pain and fighting she went through to blaze a trail for women superheroes, Black Widow gets a payoff of her own. It's something of a staple for MCU films to have their title sequences at the end of the film. Here, we get a pre-title sequence that mixes the Americans with Casino Royale, which leads into a theme song and a title sequence. Well, okay, it's actually that cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit you've heard going around the internet, but it's a sequence lifted right out of Bond. Oddly enough, it most specifically resembles Die Another Day of all movies. And then we're put right into adult Natasha's shoes and go with her on the mission. Speaking of, I'm pleased to announce that Natasha is not sidelined in her own movie. There's pretty much just one scene that isn't connected to her. But the homages don't end with just Bond, and they aren't all so specific. Natasha has a wonderfully fun Incredibles-like dynamic with her family, and anytime Russians are involved with a spy film, you're going to inevitably evoke John le Carre and the Cold War. Natasha also has to rediscover herself in Black Widow. Who she is, who she was, what is the best way to deal with her past sins, and who her family really are. She's fighting to dismantle 
dismantle a system she was fortunate enough to escape from, whereas nearly everyone else who was trapped in it never got out at all. Does that remind you all of a certain amnesiac super agent whose name also starts with a B? In fact, let's go back to James Bond one more time. Natasha is on the run after having gone rogue in Civil War. James Bond is, overall, a very loyal agent, but there are a handful of films, License to Kill and Quantum of Solace in particular, where he does operate outside the confines of his assignment and even draws the scorn of his government in order to complete his mission his way. Similar to how Bond sees the big picture and how he's able to operate in ways the governments can't in order to make the world a better place, Natasha is able to follow her instinct as a spy to see the big picture and ultimately put it an end to the atrocities and people who not only imprisoned her, but many other women across the globe. There's been a lack of genuine harder edge spy films in the last few years. The absence of Bond alone has left the hole, but the general overall lack of spy content in our theaters recently has really left us starved. And look, Black Widow is an MCU film. It's not a dour and grittier than dirt spy opus. It has a healthy dose of humor and wisecracks, and it's never not fun. And while it does succumb a bit to the MCU's knack for glossing over morally gray characters and their actions and their flaws and just making them righteous people, Black Widow at least makes an attempt, and it it mostly succeeds. Outside of that latter part, the Bourne trilogy does this with Jason Bourne, and the best Bond films do this with James Bond. It makes the lead character more human, and therefore more relatable. And while that doesn't mean we can all just strap on a leather suit and become Black Widow or Red Guardian, it does make it easier to want the spy you're watching to accomplish their mission and come back home alive. This might actually stand as some of, if not the best character work in the MCU to this point, beyond its debts to Daniel Craig's era of Bond or any other influence. And for what it's worth, we've got to acknowledge Lara Croft for being something of a trailblazer, alongside a handful of Bond women like Anya Emisova and Wei Lin for some of this material as well but I think Natasha has really brought home what those characters were trying to do, create the equivalent to Bond. Natasha Romanov is absolutely, proudly a woman, but that is never the point of her character. Sure, she uses her beauty to her advantage for occasional spy reasons, but generally speaking, there's pretty much no individual moment in any of these movies where her actions, her abilities, are defined and certainly not tempered because of her gender. She's the spy for today's world, and even if this is the only solo film we get for her, I think that holds true. If this truly is the last time we get to see Scarlett Johansson step into this role, Natasha Romanov's importance and influence are going to permeate the MCU forever. I loved Black Widow. This sits firmly in my top 10 MCU films, and yeah, part of that is because this is definitely the MCU film that is most up my alley alongside The Winter Soldier. In fact, even though Cap's second adventure definitely tops my list, Black Widow might specifically be the film I most wanted without even realizing it. Of course, like everyone else, I believe that Natasha's solo film should have come five or so years ago, and I think it's a real tragedy that we hadn't gotten a trilogy of Black Widow films up until this single movie. Natasha, Scarlett Johansson, and the audience truthfully deserved better, and I think a lot of the problems that come packaged into this film could have been remedied had this come out right after Civil War. Again, we should have at least gotten this film in between that gap of Civil War and Infinity War, or at least before Natasha's death in Endgame. And yes, when we all go back and marathon the MCU in years to come, this is going to join the first Avenger and Captain Marvel as one that we shift in the rotation out of release order, as that's where it most makes sense. But taking issues I have with Marvel Studios' treatment of the character out of the equation, I think this is just about the best Black Widow movie we could have possibly gotten, and it was more than worth the wait. Even though it might not make a lot of sense at this point, more Black Widow prequels are something I'd welcome, and probably would be a big hit for the MCU, given how warmly received this has been. And I mean, come on, give us the Daddy Harbor Red Guardian trilogy, please, please! Oh my god. I really think that this film improves the MCU. I think it opened things up in an unexpected direction and allowed the franchise to reach higher. Director Kate Shortland deserves endless praise for what she pulled off with Black Widow. 
Her vision is a massive part of what makes this film work. The MCU is notorious for sticking to its house style, but Shortland has found a way to bend that style into her own sensibilities while keeping her film copacetic with the rest. It's no secret that Marvel slates these films about 60 years into the future and the upcoming releases are exciting, but maybe Marvel Studios should look to Natasha for some extra inspiration moving forward. Simply put, Black Widow is the manifestation of Natasha Romanoff's legacy, the long-awaited and hard-fought affirmation that this character, the heart and glue of the Avengers, proudly stands shoulder to shoulder with her male peers. Oh, and Florence Pugh's a fucking star, and she more than deserves her own Black Widow trilogy going forward. Wait, a Black Widow film inspired by Moonraker? What the f***?